Okay, so I wanted to include something. I didn't include this in the original video. I made this video yesterday, but I was just like so tired. Plus, I did do a, like a workout at the gym. So when I got home, I was just like, if I was going to edit, I was just going to be like stupid. So I decided to just spend some time lazy on the couch with my friend. But yeah, um, so what I wanted to show you was I did add an additional family to the game. In a you know, in addition to the uh, character that characters I showed you, and <clears throat> they don't live in Brindleton Bay. I mean, I don't even think I need to show that. But the thing is, is like, I did show other non-Brindleton Bay families, and I wanted to show this one because it's actually a pretty cute family. Um, they're based off of the very very popular TV show, The Miraculous Ladybug. And I wanted to do, like, say, color swaps, color adaptations, just change up some things. So, like, I gave her some of Adrian's coloring, but also kept some of Marinette's looks. And I did something similar with uh, this character, where I kind of gave him sort of a Adrian slash Marinette look. And I wanted to keep the colors pretty similar to the colors they have in the show. I know in the show, um, with Marinette, her coloring is usually light on the red, pretty close to a pink, but I wanted to make this very, um, male, so I would assume if we put Marinette's colors on a boy, it would be a little darker, more concentrated color, so that's what I did, and I, I wanted to get hair that looked closer to Adrian's hair, in the Miraculous Ladybug, but I didn't have hair like that. And if I went to look up Adrian's hair, guaranteed it would be a clay fi hair. And I don't usually use those. I mean, I make an exception here and there for certain hairstyles you just can't get. And I might do it in the future, but I don't think, I don't know. With her having actually nice, normal hair that looks similar to Marinette's, I didn't want to make him stand out in the household. <sighs> Oh well, so I'm probably going to like uh, work on them some more along with uh, something I wanted to show you guys. Um, so normally if you've ever seen my gameplays, you'd see that I have these eyes, these eyes, and I normally I get them through face paint. Like I'll go through here and they'll be in the face paints. Uh... Well, a little eye icon would pop up in the in the um, when you go into face paint, and they would be here. But what I did was I took the CC and I made it so that it's in skin details, because I don't want to have to keep on because I know uh, it, it took too much time doing it this way, so I I, I didn't want to keep on going through swatches. Going and then altering the makeup and everything. I'm probably going to change this outfit. Because I, I haven't changed the other outfits. I'm just kind of like messing around with their outfits. I did the first outfit. Then saved them. And then didn't do much after that. But like yeah. Still I hope you guys enjoyed my miraculous ladybug inspired household. And they might even interact with my other characters. So who knows. So I want to continue with Sade's story. Because I do believe it's a very love-inspired story with self-acceptance and all that. But I want to um, actually show you guys the neighborhood of Brindleton Bay. I know you guys have seen this neighborhood a bajillion times. But the thing is, is like my Brindleton Bay doesn't have all the original townies. It's got mostly families that I've created. And they will play different pieces in each story. So here is the Delgado family. Which they are an original family to Brindleton Bay. They have these two uh, animals. Blue and Bartholomew. <laughs> I think that's a cute name for a cat. Um, but yeah, we've got Justin. We got Piers. Little Evie. And, you know, they're pets. And, like, the mom that used to live in this household actually lives here. No, no, no. She lives here. Yeah, she lives here. She, um... See, she left her family... Let's see, like, like this is this woman, Sapraya. 
let's see if I can get her her thing. Yeah, she left her husband D Justin to go with this guy Adam. Adam is actually married to the woman who lives in this house. Was married to the woman who lived in this house, who still does live in this house. Okay, uh, but yeah, we got Shade here, which she's the main character, but like. She's a very good parent, but she needs to find someone who's as brave and out there as her. She likes to travel. She loves to take photos. She's a very outgoing character. Um, and here's their, uh, well, their Butterbean, the little one. That was actually Supriya and uh, Adam's kid, but they abandoned him. So now he's very clingy to Shade. He loves her dearly because she took care of him. Then we have Nia here. Let me get Nia. Come on. Where's my baby girl? Okay, yeah. Here's Nia. She's actually Adin and Shade's child. She's the first one and she's gonna grow up. She's gonna grow into a child soon. So, um, I have her in an in-between height. If you notice, she's actually taller than, um, him. I wanted to do that so to make sure, you know, people know that she is definitely the older one and that they're not just the same age. Um, then we got Fei Fei here. She's actually our little puppers that we adopted the first Shade story. And she was just hanging out. She was a stray. She had no one in the world. And Shade opened her big heart and she adopted this adorable Burmese, Burmese mountain dog. And... Even though she's a bit of a glutton, she's athletic and she's inquisitive and she's like lovable and she's going to teach the kids things. Um, then we have um, this family, which they're a bit of the controversial family in the town. Um, mainly because their belief systems on things is pretty weird. See, the mother here, Hilda... She is very religious, like very, to the point where she hates any sort of uh, homosexual things. She's very conservative and very protective of her family. She's also a Republican, so putting that out there. And here's her husband, who's very much the opposite of her, where he's sweet and loving He's an activist, he believes in people having all rights, but, like, he can be a bit mean because, you know, he has to deal with demon woman. Then there's their daughter, Danielle. She's, um, a bit of a lone wolf character. She's outdoorsy, and she just, you know, she wants to become a mountain ranger someday. And she's straying away from the craziness of her household so that she can actually pursue that. Then here's Joshua. He's a smart kid, but he does have a temper. And he's, sm like, he's full-on smart. He's a good kid. But, like, because of his mom's constant corruption, he's she's constantly forcing him to choose between being happy and being uh, part of her family. Then here's little Zach. Zach was actually adopted by the family. He's not, like, blood-related to them, but he's, like... Super duper sweet, and I love him. He's adorable. And, like, him and the other two kids, uh, Brad and Layla, they, they just, like, they all play together. They all have fun. These two are twins. These two are twins. So they're, they're, they always had twins, no matter what. That, and, like, it's kind of funny because, like, they have the same color scheme, pretty much. Um... Then we got, uh, let's see, we got the Cho family, which is Shade's, uh, family. They're her family from, like, like, adoption, because, like, that's kind of the, the thing going on in Brindleton Bay. Like, they feel like people deserve the rights to have a happy f future and a happy life, so... The Cho family adopted Shade back when she was really young and they gave her a life that she couldn't have possibly gotten in the foster system. So much that she decided she wanted to adopt a little thing of her own, so... Yeah. <laughs> and, like, this family, they adopted a kid too, so... Yeah, it's full-on adoption area. 
Then, oh, okay, another family where there are people who were adopted. Okay, so this boy here, Tony, he's actually related to this family over here, the Rutherford family. Tony is their nephew. Um... His mother died back when he was pretty young and they took care of him. It wasn't great for him because... Okay, let me go back to Tony. Um, yeah, it wasn't great for him because his family wasn't exactly nice to him. Well, his aunt, anyway. His, like, his, his cousins love him to pieces. And his uncle's pretty okay with him. But, like, his... Like, his family altogether, they're just kind of, like not cool with his sexuality, I guess. Like, okay, so his uncle and his cousins are okay, but the main person who he's blood related to is not okay with it. And I suppose they're all technically blood related to him, but like the direct bloodline of his from his mother's side just doesn't like him. And she feels she has to keep him away. He does wish to have a soulmate, which he does have in his, uh, partner here. His name is Dallas. Dallas is uh, very open with his sexuality. He's like cheerful and happy and bubbly. But he did have a pretty rough life growing up being a homosexual boy and like um, having issues with things. Then we got like these two, Hillary and uh, Annie. They're a lesbian couple. They're a gay couple. They decided since they were going to be judged and criticized throughout the town. This was before these the other families that are here moved in. Um, let me see if I can find them. But yeah, this was before... Let's see, where are they? I know they're here somewhere. Because they're in Brindleton Bay. Yeah, here we go. The Douglas family. This family actually has uh, LGBT sims as well. But, like, in a different way. Um, these... They were revolutionary for their time because they were the first naturally born in Brindleton Bay gay families. <laughs> and they made, you know, this beautiful little thing right here. Her name is Ky Kaylee Morin and she was adopted by Annie and Hillary and like they, they love her to pieces. Uh, Tony and Dallas don't have a kid yet. But they are planning on having one soon, so stay tuned for that. We got the Hendrix family, which has the most sweetest man in the world. Oh my god, he's just an adorable bean. This guy is Theodore Hendrix, and Theo is the nicest guy in the world. He's pretty much loved by everyone. Every single person who meets him just falls in love with him. But the thing is, is like his ex-wife was not good to him. She used him for money. She knew he was a nice guy, so she just let him... You know, she just stepped all over him. And, like, she doesn't actually live in Brindleton Bay. That's why she's not featured in this. She lives in San Myshuno. She, like, moved over there. So, yeah. He's a family-oriented guy. He takes care of his family. He's a good sim. He's always been a good sim. And he's modest. Because, you know, he doesn't seem to see how good-looking he is. He's a good-looking sim. <laughs> funny thing is, is like me and my friend we were talking about it and we were saying like this sim kind of looks like a guy we know already and it's weird so here's his son travis his son travis is a athlete he wants to actually build some more muscle and just you know actually be a full-on athlete he's very active because of that and he's super duper goofy Someday he'll find the right person who will love how goofy and weird he is. Then we have the Hecking family. I, they were a family that was already in the game. And the two of them, they actually did the whole, uh... Let me see. They did the whole surrogacy thing, so... They're actually, they're actually related to uh, Brent Hecking, the two kids. And, like, his cousin was their surrogate so she lives here her name is adriana bullock and she's a very nice person very outgoing she's kind like a sensitive person she's smart and she's brave so she was able to take up the challenge of birthing two children and giving them away 
I actually don't know who this is here. Um, I'm guessing that this was an empty lot. But hey, Miss Webb, she'll probably be a good addition to our game. Her name is Lorena Webb. Okay, um, she doesn't seem like a good person. <laughs> well, hopefully she moves out of the area, but it seems like she loves to garden. She loves to go outside, but she is a little self-absorbed and she wants to be a criminal. So I don't know, maybe we should see if we can find someone else to move in her lot. But like for now, that's she does live here. Um, let's see, is there anybody else that did I miss? Okay, we got the Douglas family, which has... Uh, oh, I think I t spoke to you guys about them a little bit on Twitter. But yeah, here's Rain. Rain, actually, she works in the city. She's um, a nurse. I believe now a nurse, or are a nurse, or she might be a doctor. But yeah, like, she's, she's going to be a doctor. And this is um, Hideki. He works for... Uh, let me see. I think he's a, a student, an art student. Yeah, he's an art student. I did a little more detail on them on Twitter, so I would say look into that. And, like, here is Casey Roberts. Casey's a very, very cool sim. She's, like, I would say one of the best you can think of. So, um, she's, she just wants to find the one for her. She's, but she has a hard time because, well... I don't know if you guys can tell, but she's transgender. So, and she is the only transgender sim in this area. So, she's an active sim. She likes music. But she does have depression because, you know, it's, it's very hard for her. They adopted these two little kitties, Bella and Fabio. And Bella is like the drama queen kitty. She's like, meow. She's... Just so into her herself. And she's um, a free spirit and a hipster, I guess. I ad adopted them like this. They they randomly generated with those traits. So we got our uh, Sundar Kitty Fabio. <laughs> Ew, no. I hate you, Bucka. <laughs> he's a gamer. And he's territorial. Oh god, he's like a nerd. Oh my god, I have a nerd cat. I'm sorry. That was just beautiful. I didn't even know they had human traits. <laughs> oh god, this is beautiful. Okay, okay, which one? Did I? Okay, so let's see. I think I got everyone. Um, we get the Hendrix family. Oh, this girl here. She, for some reason, will not stop going towards this house. Um... <laughs> I don't know why. She keeps coming over with things of moldy... Uh, I'm guessing someone from the welcome wagon came to her house and she's just trying to eat the fruitcake. So she just keeps coming with moldy fruitcake to the front of the house and just looking through the windows. It's so weird. But yeah, her name is Cecilia Driscoll and she's actually a pretty cool sim. I mean, despite being weird, she's a cool sim. She likes uh, the band Queen. She and, uh, let's see, uh, what's his name? She and this guy here, Kage, um, they're pretty good friends. They talk all the time, and they just, like, well, I mean, like, before anybody jumps the gun on anything, Kage is gay, so that's why this family is the weird one in this group, because they are the pure Christian family in comparison to all these very diverse, multifaceted families. So, like, and I mean, it's not even them really, it's more like the mother who is the matriarch. She kind of controls how these people do live their lives. So, it's just kind of like sad for them in a way. That's why the cousin couldn't stay with them because he was just tired of being bossed around by her. Um, but, I mean, that was a story in itself. I I mean, I think, personally, I should do a mini-video just on uh, Dallas and Tony. Because, like, they, their life was rough. Their life was really rough. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I actually absolutely adore all of these sims. And I definitely look forward to them all interacting with each other. 
in Shade Story. I didn't like fill up every single uh, area. I did only do like a few sims in every other area, like like in San Myshuno. Oh, I guess I guess like I'll feature them in this episode. In San Myshuno, the McNeil family, which is this horrible woman who left her husband, uh, married this guy Grayson, who has more money than him, obviously, because she he lives in a big penthouse thing in San Myshuno. Um. These houses are grayed out because I don't play them. But, like, um... They used to go to San Myshuno a lot. <laughs> then here's a... This is a kind of a random family. But, like, I don't think they're gonna interact with people. I got Marshall Lee from <laughs> Adventure Time. And he's got, um... Living in his household, Thor... Yeah, Thor Odinson. <laughs> God. I have such a weird roster of sims. I mean, I I, did, I put a lot of weird sims inside of this area. Um, this Fires family really has expanded. Wow. Oh, God. They had three kids? Okay, so they got um, Chabon here. You got Moira. You got Dominic. Oh, Moira here. She's she's a she's a player and a half. Oh, there goes my phone. Burp. But yeah, this woman is a player and a half. She got this nice looking husband here, and she goes around and she goes hitting on girls. Maybe she's a lesbian and she just doesn't want her husband to know. But she has two girls with him. Well, I guess like I don't even know what the babies are. Maybe they had triplets at some point. But yeah, like, um, she got Keegan here, she got Morgan, and she's got Siobhan, and like, these two are arguing with each other left and right. They're like, this one, she just wants a party, this one, she wants to be like a junior Republican, Democrat, whatever. But like, she's very, uh, out there and ambitious. This one, she's just a party animal. She's like, woo! But maybe she'll grow out of that. I don't know. Maybe Morgan will grow out of that. And who knows, maybe all these sims will interact with my Brindleton Bay sims, but the Brindleton Bay area is where I'm going to focus on my month of love. Because I want to make all these characters intertwine with each other and love each other and be just ever so close, you know? So I think I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, and subscribe for more spastic content. And I hope you guys enjoy the next Shade story. Love you. See ya. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, this is Phantom Celebi, and normally what I do here is I do a Phantom Squad top tier. And the people who are on the top tier know who they are. For the most part, I haven't updated it in maybe a month or two. And I might do it recently because, like, do it soon because I do have some more funders and backers towards the channel. Which means I'll probably do more content more frequently. But I figure, you know, you guys know who you are. If you are watching me so I'm gonna say thank you for following me and I want to do more interactive videos where I interact with you guys maybe do some more stuff with the Sims and possibly just you know do a few full-on q and I'm pretty sure that's what I want to do for my next video so I would say follow me on Twitter because that's where I'll have my polls maybe I'll put, you know link the poll into this video and like you guys can do that but i mean you do have to be following me on twitter to be seeing this stuff so i also have an instagram account it's also phantom celebi so there's another account on there that i would prefer you guys not follow me on it's a personal account for my friend friends and family to follow me on and like i mean if you want to i would say just be respectful because i do have family member on there but, like, um, I mean, maybe I could have even named it something differently, but I do like my online alias. I actually love it a lot, so much that I'm looking to work with several artists, including, um, one of the artists I'm actually pretty close with, and I'm hoping she'll help me make a, uh, well, I want to make something unique for my channel. I love my little Celebi, but the thing is, is, like, it is a Nintendo-owned Thing, so 
I do want to stray a little away from that and maybe make a chibi kajinka. I mean, if that works well, I probably will replace my little Celebi girl with uh, a kajinka of her. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will be working on so much, so much. So, I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye. Mwah. If you enjoyed the music that's in this video, it was done by Glitch City. She has a YouTube account, and she also has a Twitter account, so I will link the two below. And I hope to see you guys soon. Yo!